Hello everyone, my name's Joe, and I thought I would take a moment to record a screencast to show you how I built the CentOS Linux image uh, that runs on my Mac PC as a VMware virtual image. So the concept here is that uh, you use VMware to host a virtual CentOS installation, and I could do all my debugging and so forth on my Mac here a little bit easier and then when I get things all ironed out I actually deploy it onto my actual hardware so uh, this is how I go about doing my image I start off with the VMware uh, new image tool and note that I have a CentOS DVD uh, installed DVD that's remotely mounted on a, another PC in my home so I, I kinda point the VMware installer to that CD image which is the CentOS 6.3 disk. Now for those of you who are familiar with installing CentOS from the CD or DVD directly onto hardware, you'll know that you, you, know, you boot off the CD or DVD and then it goes through all this Q&A about what packages you want to run and it, you know, how to set up your first user and setting the root password, all that kind of good stuff to get the thing going. For some reason, you know, I don't know the magic behind how uh, the VM does it, but when I enter my basics into this first screen of the virtual machine setup, it automatically selects all the packages and gives me a, uh, a final operating image. So I'm not really sure exactly what packages are going to get installed uh, when this is done, but uh, I, I know that it gives me an operational image at the end here. So when we're done, we're not quite sure fully what packages are there. That just means that, you know, if we need a package and it's not installed, we'll have to install it at that time. So let's get this uh, install kicked off and we'll see where we are. So these look like the messages that come up uh, if you were to boot off your installed disk on the you know actual hardware so it, it's looking very similar at this point to when you boot off your hardware now I have some dead time or not some dead time uh, but some periods where it's pretty static I cut out of this video after the fact so your install might take just a little bit more so once again this screen looks very film uh, very familiar to you if you've installed on a on a hardware based install with an install CD now at this point it looks like it's doing dependency checks on some packages uh, when you install uh, on an actual piece of hardware usually you have to select which packages you want to install so this is where I mentioned earlier I'm not really sure which packages it's choosing but uh, you know, from my experience, it seems like it, it selects an appropriate set of packages to get us started. And once again, once these packages get going, it takes a little bit of time, uh, especially since I have a, a DVD mounted across the network. So I am going to uh, kind of pause the, the recording here. You'll see it shoot right to the end here uh, it's whatever 90 some percent complete so at this point it's finishing up the packages and uh, when you're installing it by hand with the DVD you have to go through and set up your initial user and root passwords and set your time server and so forth uh, the VMware is somehow selecting all that for us and I think it's just going to reboot here uh, and give me a chance to log in
So here we are at the base CentOS install. I'm going to log in as myself. Now, I don't spend a whole lot of time in this visual desktop UI kind of environment. Uh, but I am going to log in here and do a couple quick video or a couple quick UI customizations because I need to get the CentOS install uh, prepared so that I can do. I like to work mostly through my Mac environment and secure shell in. So that's the kind of thing that I'm going to need to uh, get prepared on this installation. So I'm going to do just a, a quick change here to the default terminal uh, to allow unlimited scrolling. Uh, I hate when I go back into history and try to find something and find out it got terminated. Uh, first thing I like to do uh, in the actual OS is to do an update. Uh, okay, so I did my yum update here and I, I see that I don't have sudo users uh, for me. So the way to fix that is to uh, su to root. And there's a command called vi sudo uh, that allows you to edit the sudo configuration file. And the difference between vi sudo and vi is that vi sudo will uh, do some sanity checks on it to make sure it's okay. Now, I always forget what the command is or what the, the config line is to add to it, um, to add to the to the vi sudo file. So I'm going to go copy it real quick and come right back here and paste it in. So now I should have sudo user permissions and I should be able to do my yum update. Update all the packages that are pre-installed to the latest. Now this is going to take a bit of time so I'll pause the recording and come back in a second. Okay, the sudo update is complete. Now one of the first things I'm going to do after the update is add the EPEL repository. Uh, this is the extra packages repository. I, I think for some licensing reasons, you, you need to go through this extra step of adding the repository in. But some of the packages I like to use are in the EPEL, so uh, that's why I need to do that. Next thing I'm going to do is install the open SSH. I need to uh, configure it to SSH in so I can do my work. I'll install those packages. And before I do my SSH config, this is a pretty good time for me to uh, shut down this virtual image and take a snapshot of it. Uh, doing periodic snapshots is important because it's just a convenient way to, to go back in time and uh, kind of rewind to where you were at a particular point. So before I get too far on this, I want to save off this configuration. So I'm going to shut down the virtual image. And then in VMware, uh, there are some, some menu items to kind of save off the an image. I, I don't remember exactly where this is. I need to poke around at some of these menu items real quick. That's not it. Not it. Uh, here we go. Over here, this button is the way to manage your snapshots. So I only have my current state, and I'm going to take a snapshot of this with a quick note to say that it's kind of the base install with the update and the only packages I really added were the, the SSH. And there's the snapshot. So I'm going to come back in and start this back up again so I can continue my work. And we will configure SSH. In the .SSH file, uh, the way to do this is create a file called authorized keys. And in this file, you just paste in all the public keys that uh, the instance will allow you to, to log in as. So I have my, my personal key. It is a public key, um, but, you know, I still get nervous here, so I'm going to blur this out. I should be able to let anybody see this, but I don't trust it. So I pasted in my public key into this authorized key file. 
And at this point, I should be able to log in to the instance using my key from my Mac instance. So I'm going to create a new terminal uh, over here on the Mac and see if I can log in to my new CentOS install. So the first thing I'm going to need is the IP address of the, of the install. Uh, do a quick IF config here and see what the IP address is. 192, 168, 188, 132 I think that is. So I'm going to try to SSH into it. I already pasted in my public key into the CentOS authorized key, so this should take. There's a lot of documentation out there about not having to use your password, but okay, so I SSH'd in, I did a quick LS, looked at my directory, let's see what it looks like over here on the on the image, and it's the same. So good news there, I'm now remotely logged in, and I, I like working from my Mac because I'm used to all the, uh, you know, I'm used to all the keyboard shortcuts and so forth. Uh, one other quick trick I'm going to show you is that... Um, Using the IP address is uh, frustrating, so there's a way to set up a config file for SSH. Uh, just edit a file called config, and you can see over here I have a little block that says there's my IP address, who I want to log in as, and I called it CentOS. Um, it's just a, an easier way to log in instead of using the IP address. A little bit later on, I think I'm going to have to add it to my Etsy host file, but this is kind of similar. It's just a way to, to refer to the refer to it by name. So now I can SSH into CentOS and I should be in. And there we are. So the next uh, step here we're going to take is installing the database. So first things first, we'll install the MySQL packages both the server and the client. Uh, and the confirm, I keep forgetting to put the dash Y in my yum install, I should, I should alias that. I don't think ever I've done a yum install and said no. So, all right, so we have so the next step after installing the database is to run the secure installation script. This will do some steps to to secure up the database. First, you have to enter the root password that's defaulted to none. And some problems here. Oh, all right. I know what I did. Installed the database, but never started it running. So let's start up the database. 